Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Live from the Youth Room, uh, here at the Youth Room at Mirrors Chapel, United Methodist Church. I am the Director for Youth and Discipleship, Discipleship here at Mirrors Chapel, and I am glad to be with you on this uh, not-so-gorgeous day, this Thursday rainy day. I hope that you are doing a lot better than the weather is right now. It's kind of gloomy and been raining all day long, but I am glad to be here with you and just spend a few minutes with you just connecting here at the Mirrors Chapel Facebook page. Like I said, I hope you're doing great. And so this morning I was thinking about what to share and what for us to, to talk about today. And, and I kind of got thinking after we had our youth group meeting last night on Zoom, we ended up having a conversation about things that we were nostalgic over, you know, back before March. You know, we talked about how we used to be able to meet together at the church and do things that was seems crazy now, like play tag and that kind of stuff. And at the end of youth group every week, we would have a, a prayer time together and we would stand in a circle and we would actually hold hands as we prayed together. Uh, that seems crazy now, but it wasn't that long ago and we were doing that. And so, so we were kind of walking down memory lane. And so that got me to thinking about what to share with with you guys and for us to think about today. And I started think, get, thinking about what a nostalgia kind of means to me, and especially when it comes to my walk with Christ and, and my faith journey. And so where I went to in my mind was the first time as a very young Christian that I began to understand how alive and rich the scriptures were. That when you come to the Bible and you read the Word of God that is to us from God, and you really begin to understand what's happening in the Scriptures and what's being said and the impact that it has on your life, it really does change things. It changes everything, actually. Flips your whole world upside down. And so what I would like to do with you now is to share with you the first time that I felt personally inspired by scripture with an understanding that this is meant to change my life and for the better. And it came early on when we were doing a Bible study. I was reading the scriptures uh, around Matthew 25 when he talks about how he views us, how we view him, and, and how we should view the people around us. And so what I would like to do is read that scripture to you and then maybe just chat about it for a minute and then, uh, and then we can have a time of prayer. So the scripture is Matthew 25, 34 through 45. And in it, he's trying to describe what the kingdom of God is like. And this is Jesus speaking, which is a whole other thing. When you think about that Jesus is God, the son of God, the son of man, uh, when he speaks, he speaks with the authority of God. And so right off the bat, we know that this is something for us to pay attention to. So this is what Jesus says in Matthew 25, 34 through 45. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are prepared. No, nope, sorry. Come, you who are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality? Or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, and to the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry, and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty, and you didn't give me a drink. 
I was a stranger and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you are refusing to help me. Now, when I first read that, it, I hadn't been out of high school long and I had been bullied in high school and, and that was a pretty traumatic part of my experience in school, especially middle school. Um, and so I had often thought about the way that I was, that I was treated. And so when I come to this scripture and it dawned on me something very, very important. One, there is a call for us to help people to reach out, to build up, to not tear down, to encourage and equip the people around us. In other words, we're supposed to leave people better than when we found them. The second thing that I got from that, that dawned on me, is that uh, Jesus takes the way that we treat people personally. So when we treat people well, when we treat people with kindness and respect, Jesus takes that personally and it's as if we are treating him that way. And we get that kind of credit for treating, treating Jesus that way. However, when we mistreat people, when we are mean to people, when we put people down, Jesus also takes that personally. And then I realized that Jesus loves me so much that when someone treats me well, Jesus takes that personally. And when someone treats me not so well, Jesus takes that personally as well. So it became a realization that the gospel is called to change us, to make us more like Jesus. And so I'm supposed to love people the way that Jesus loved people. That's the call on my life, and that's the call on your life. You know, Jesus told us to love our neighbors, okay? That means we need to treat them well. We need to encourage them. We need to equip them. We need to help them. We need to love our enemies. That's, boy, that's not easy. It's hard enough loving our neighbors, right? Loving our enemies, how hard is that? But that's the call on our life. And in thinking about the pandemic and everything that's going on, the stress around everything from how schools are having to operate in the, in the pandemic to uh, the extra workload that puts on, it is easy for that to kind of stress us out. And when we get stressed out, it becomes real easy to focus in on that and not on the way that we treat people. And so it can be easy to be short with people, to be snappy with people, to be to get ill, and in the one hand, it's understandable because we are probably one of the highest stressful times that I can remember as far as just the culture that we're living in and the situations that we're going through. But, you know, we are called to love our neighbors and our enemies and the people around us, and, and there's no escape clause in the scripture. It doesn't say, uh, love your neighbors unless there's a pandemic. And then you don't have to worry about that. Uh, love your enemies unless you're stressed out. And if you're stressed out, the enemies are the perfect people to take your stress out on because they're your enemies and it won't really hurt their feelings because they're your enemies. Now, we're supposed to treat people well regardless. And in thinking about that, for me personally, that becomes more the most difficult when we're talking about uh, the people that you're around the most. So I think about my family. You know, I'm, sometimes I'm nicer to people outside the home than I am to people in my home. Like at, outside, I can be polite and nice and try to put on a happy face and then come home and then snap at my kids over something that I shouldn't have because I don't feel like I have to pretend around them, right? And so that's not fair to them. So here's my encouragement to you. God wants other people to treat you well, and God wants you to treat other people well. And when we do that, we get credit as if we are doing that to Jesus. 
So maybe we can all just use a little reminder that, that love should be our compass. It should be our guide. It should help us decide what we're going to do and not do and how we're going to treat people because it matters. It really does matter. And so that's it. Uh, I thought the very first time that I realized that being a Christian means that uh, it's a it's an action. It is something that we do. It is something that God calls us towards. You know, I'm reminded of that phrase that God loves you just the way you are, but loves you too much to leave you that way. <laughs> you know, that's the way I think God is with me. You know, even on my best days, I'm not all that great, right? But and God loves me just the way I am. But God continues to mold me uh, like the Potter that He is, and the more I want to allow myself to be the clay in his hands to be the person that he's creating me to be and so and that's in in good times and in pandemics and so and that's what you know that you're not in this walk alone and that's one way that we can encourage each other that we can build each other up as brothers and sisters in Christ and to uh, just stand with each other and say that we are going to be beacons of light in in dark places and so um, I hope that this brings a little bit of, of hope and a little bit of uh, joy into what could be a rainy, dreary day, and to know that uh, God's at work in, in all times and in all places, and in work through you and through me, and that we have the opportunity to um, be the light for someone else, to encourage them and equip them and to love them. And so, there you go. That is uh, live from the youth room, Thursday edition here. I'll be coming to you live from the youth room every Thursday uh, between 1 and 1.30. And I hope that uh, you are well until I see you again. All right. Bye.